Hello, everyone. I'm Walter Proper, the Executive Director for the International Association of Public Health Logisticians, and we're continuing with our Chapter Leader Spotlight Series. And today we have uh, Mamamoto, who is in the Democratic Republic of Congo and is starting our newest chapter and is the original person who started IPHL. So welcome, Moto. And why don't you begin by giving us your full name and tell us where you're actually from and where you're living now. Okay, thank you so much. My name is uh, uh, Eomba Motomoke, but uh, everybody knows me under the name of Moto. So, and getting old, I'm Mama Moto for everybody. <laughs> so here I am. Uh, I worked for a long time, long time, more than 14 years for GSI and where I started IPHL. And then uh, I had the age, I wanted to move back. I'm originally from Congo, but I'm an American citizen. So I wanted to come back to DRC and work here and uh, make a change. That's a dream I had. So I started with uh, Village Reach as a country director. So I'm the one who opened Village Reach country office here and started the last one for the first time in DRC. And then I um, thought of doing something different because I wanted to really to work closely with the national level. So got a, a consultant contract with the World Bank for a year. So I was attached to Programme National d'Approvision uh, as a technical advisor there, a technical assistant. So really there, uh, I can proudly say that I made a difference. We started the uh, ELMIS, we started uh, really uh, teaching um, LMIS at lower level, uh, so the contract ended. So now I'm working on my own as a consultant and uh, I'm happy to do what I'm doing now. So Excellent. thank you. Thank Excellent. you, Walter. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's just uh, continue on sort of um, what is interesting or exciting to you about working in health supply chain? So actually it's uh, making the difference of seeing that uh, you reach and you find that the system is not even there. It's really not only broken, but doesn't exist. And you start like making piece by piece and seeing, and the most exciting thing now in the RC is to see like everybody now is expert in supply chain. <laughs> While when we started, no one knew about supply chain when we started with GSI because I came first here with JSI before even having the idea of moving completely. So it's really exciting to see that uh, everybody now talks about supply chain and everybody talks about logistics and everybody is excited about it. So that's, that's the exciting part. And uh, which made that when the COVID came, it found a system. That's uh, and, yeah, so now people are working in COVID because the system is there. So the system is there now, not only uh, because when we started with a, a JSI, we were only in family planning. So now it's really all programs. Uh, you find like logistics uh, supply chain is very important. Excellent, excellent. So tell us a little bit about getting started now with the new DRC chapter, country chapter. Yeah, so <laughs> as uh, I started the IPHL, I really was thinking that how could I push the IPHL in DRC? And then I met uh, Ricardo, we started talking uh, Ricardo is now working with his task uh, manager for supply chain at USA. We started talking about uh, really how to push supply chain. And Ricardo is coming from a broader thinking because uh, he started the IPHL chapter in uh, Benin, mm. but went further and made it a national supply chain 
that uh, brought everybody together under one umbrella. So even here in DRC, they have many small organizations working in supply chain now, because as I said, the supply chain, everybody woke up and found that supply chain is very important. So when I wanted to do IPHM, uh, Ricardo said that no, that will be, let's do something that is going to be a bigger umbrella and bring all the small supply chain under them. Uh, so that's how we have that uh, Ajekan, that uh, is a bigger picture that is going to work with many ministries, not only Ministry of Health. It's going to work, you know, in the uh, uh, agriculture, uh, mines, uh, education, um, health. So now umbrella, uh, IPHL is mainly in health. So that's, yes. that's the branch that, uh, you know, it will be mainly branched in health and where we are going to work more with uh, uh, PNAM again. And this morning I called the director of PNAM to tell him that uh, we got a link to apply for the small grant for IPHL. Uh, so I'm discussing with him that, you know, I don't make things that the, the program national under Professor Man doesn't approve. So I have a meeting with him tomorrow to see like, what should I we write in that grant? So okay. that, that's where we stand in IPHL. And so then the me, end, yes. I'm gonna put you on the spot. How many members do you think you'll have by the end of the year for the local chapter? Yeah, for, yes, for now, uh, because we are in the start right. and we didn't want to, we are like around 80 and plus just in the beginning. So as now we are, we have now what we, they call here F92, F96, that gives you the right of meetings. Hmm. So we are not yet fully registered, but we have now the right to meet. So That's I true. think that is where we are going to launch and start asking people to really apply. And uh, so I, I think like we'll move very fast because I say, that many people are interested in uh, in supply chain. Excellent, yeah. So why don't we go back now and talk a little bit about the history of starting IPHL. So uh, I think some people know, but many of our members don't really know how it started. So why yeah. don't you give us, tell us a little bit about how it actually started in the very beginning. So when we started uh, IPHL, uh, as uh, I said that in the beginning, many people did not know even the whole Africa, what is supply chain and how to do it. Uh, by that time, JSI had a three weeks course. We used to teach three weeks. And then at the end of the three weeks, each country, because it was many countries coming together, were taking high leaders from countries to come and, uh, and share and uh, discuss about the supply chain. And they'll go with an action plan on how are they going to improve the supply chain. But by then it was difficult. Uh, we didn't have all those WhatsApp. WhatsApp came really a little bit after all this. So we needed something that will keep people connected that when they go back to their country, uh, they can ask questions. So that's when we created after South Africa course with I think eight or nine countries, we created that, okay, let's do uh, something that we still connected. So they could ask each other questions and it was at least served by emails. We had a group email, they would send questions. So that's really how we started with IPHL. It was a group, and then we sat down thinking how to make it an association, ask people to register, even those who were not in that course. But at the beginning, we started with people that were in the course in South Africa. And now we have and, more than 8,000 members from over 150 oh, countries, yeah. which is excellent. That's, and we're now adding a new country chapter with DRC, which is excellent. Great. Okay, so... Um, 
what else do you think people should know about the DRC chapter or coming events or where you hope to go? Yeah, so uh, I think like a DRC chapter, what people need to do to know that uh, as a DRC is like a continent on its own. So we want to have chapters in each province. So it will be like a, each province will have also like a chapter and we report it to the main chapter in the capital, the main chapter will report to the global IPHL at the international level. So that's, that's how I perceive it. So that will help us to tackle issues province by province, because actually now I give uh, supply chain support by province. So I think like uh, in health, actually. So that will help, uh, like to have a chapter mm -hmm. by province, then they can also discuss on their own, their own uh, issues because issues are different from one province to another province. So really getting at that field-based uh, addressing you know, issues locally, which is fantastic. And yeah. I think a few other of our larger countries are also looking at this concept because they're so large and diverse. So they'll be yeah. all looking forward to sharing how that goes, what's happening yeah. with, all, with the entire yeah. community of practice. Mm. Okay, so Mamoto, thank you very much for your time. I know that connections with DRC is always, internet is always sometimes a challenge. So I'm glad we were able to make it happen. Uh, yay! <laughs> And, and again, thank you for your time. Uh, do you want to say any final words? No, actually, I'm very, very excited uh, to go back to where we started and uh, see like, uh, you know, we can do something. As I told you, like my dream is really to do something for this country. So uh, that would be great. Uh, so uh, I'm really, really excited. And even the, 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 Bureau Executive Committee, they are very excited when I told them that, you know, we're going to open a chapter for IPHL. So they, they know now that we are branching separately because we have many, uh, many, oh, what can I say? Uh, like education. And Different areas, areas. yes. Now yeah. know that, you know, health has its own standing uh, it makes them very excited. That's excellent. All right. Well, thank you again for your past work in starting IPHL and your yes. future work of really getting our newest country chapter going. So again, okay. everyone, thank you for your time. We will be continuing our chapter uh, leader spotlight series. And for you Francophone um, members, we are going to begin to do some of our interviews in French. Okay. Uh, so on verra for that. So uh, thank you again and bye everyone. Okay, bye. Thank you, Walter, for your time too. Bye.